Hi everybody, welcome back, and if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Max Haddad, and today's video is The People in Prison, Part 3. Enjoy. Now, in previous episodes, I talked about people I was very close to, I talked about people I butted heads with, uh, talked about my friend Moss and Arian, who was basically mislabeled because he was scared when he first got to prison and clicked up, and my computer just made a noise you're going to be able to hear, but don't worry about it. Um... Today, I'm talking about somebody that I didn't know intimately. I had multiple conversations with them. Uh, I sold them food a lot. Uh, and basically, I felt bad for him. Uh, it's not why I sold him food. Um, it wasn't a pity thing. But this was somebody who you could tell had been whoosh, behind the eight ball their whole life. Now, I know that he has had and, and i assume still has people that love him right like grandparents that love the hell out of him i'm not sure what the situation is with his parents but you could hear his grandparents over the phone a lot supporting him being nice to him they were sending him money um and this was one of actually very few people that i as much as i pitied him or had sympathy for him i didn't like him because the people that were loving to him he treated like crap and people that were abusing him openly manipulating him trying to get him hooked on drugs so they could cuff him and have him do work for them he was nice to them uh his name was snaps now that wasn't his god-given name it was the name that he had been given in prison because he always walked around doing the I can't do it very well. It's a, you know, like when you have a can of chewing tobacco and you do that, he was really good at it. And it wasn't because he had chewed tobacco. He told everybody it was like some weird twitch that he picked up from meth. I don't know that that was true or not. I, I, I kind of got the feeling that when he was given the name Snaps, he just went with it. Uh, and he did it all the time. I don't mean like you'd see him off by himself, like, psh, 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 psh. but in the middle of conversations, when he was excited about something, when you told him, yeah, man, I can do that. He'd be like, huh, bet. Like that was what he did. And, and that's where he got the name. It was odd. He had had a meth problem. That's why he was in prison. He had gotten caught with meth. He wasn't a dealer. He wasn't a, a producer. He just was doing it and had gotten caught enough times that it became a prison sentence. Um, probably just once hard drugs. You only have to get caught once. Um, and he would skitter. There's no other way to put it. Skitter around the dorm, begging people, asking people for money because he was always trying to scrounge up, you know, like 10 soups worth of Suboxone. He was trying to buy drugs from the few people in the dorm that were in possession of them and sold them and they knew how desperate he was and so they would you know store out drugs to him meaning they would give him here's some of this you need to pay me this much next week because you don't have the money today it's going to cost more and then uh, predictably the following week he wouldn't have the money because any money he got he used to get more drugs and it wasn't um uh, it wasn't always, you know, heroin and stuff. It was a lot of times it was like this Katie stuff, this synthetic marijuana, but it's not, it's, it's nearly lethal. And it, I never understood why people do it because basically the process of smoking it is so involved. You have to get these brown paper towels. You have to soak them in really, really thick instant coffee. You then have to plaster them up against one of the fans to dry the paper off. Uh, and then you have to take this this Katie, which has been sprayed on, you know, sheets of, of legal mail. That way it can get mailed to the prison and the guards don't confiscate it. Uh, cause the guards don't look at your legal mail. I believe that's changing though. And, uh, so you cut the legal mail up into tiny pieces and you roll it in this. So you're just like, you're rolling paper in coffee drenched paper towels and the coffee is so it doesn't burn too quickly, I guess. Uh, very involved, huge risk of being caught. You could tell anybody that had been smoking it because they were just like, they were just, there was just like tar everywhere. And, uh, and when you smoked it, this is why I never got it as well, is you would basically like look, 
really uncomfortable. And nobody was ever like, yeah, it feels amazing. They were always like, whoa, I thought I was going to die. Oh, that was scary. Okay, give me some more. It's like, what? And I think it's because we were in prison and it was one of the cheapest things you could get, probably the cheapest thing you could get in order to get high. And uh, so, you know, you saw people who weren't ready to give up that head change, you know, like a lot of addiction um, is you don't have a better way to deal with uncomfortable feelings than to just get out of yourself with chemicals. So even though it makes nearly no sense and it's awful for you, uh, people were smoking this Katie stuff because it was the predictable way, you know, consistent way that they could get out of their head. It lasted like literally three minutes and uh, it, it just was, it was gross. But he would skitter around try to earn money, tell people he'd pay him knowing he wasn't going to. So he was constantly in danger, constantly being yelled at, constantly being threatened. I actually never saw him get beat up. And that's kind of why I feel comfortable talking about him is as much as he was like the scapegoat for every bit of chaos in the dorm, he never really got it laid into him. He never got beaten up real bad while I was there or at all that I know of. Uh, and he brought it on himself and, and had he been nice to people that were nice to him, I don't even know if I'd be making this. I'm not trying to gossip about bad people. That's not what this is about, but there were a lot of people in prison getting high, even though you could tell they didn't want to, or manipulating people. And then apologizing later for it but this was somebody snaps was somebody who loved it he loved being a scumbag and i met all types while i was in prison you know dangerous ones uh i guess i only met two types dangerous ones and pathetic ones <laughs> that's basically it you know people walking around with their chest puffed up trying to look tough and people who just like totally fit the you know like drug addict living under a bridge stereotype and they were like happy with it so i would hear snaps on the phone with his grandparents like i said you could hear uh, particularly his grandma you know like saying are you okay honey do you are they being nice to you do you have what you need uh and i don't know how she really was but that's what i heard on the phone and you would hear him saying things like shut up grandma like i need the money come on you said you would give me the money and he was so upset about the money the money the money because it was the only way that he could keep getting high and more than that he had gotten himself in such a shit ton of trouble that if he didn't get the money he would get beaten up he would get potentially killed uh and he would tell her that he would say Oh, you know how they are here. They, they're trying to extort me. I, I got to pay them or they'll hurt me. Where the truth is, nobody gave a shit about snaps, except he got up in their business and, and owed them tons of money. He brought it on himself. There are people who are extorted in prison. Child molesters. Anybody with a sex case, really, a lot of times they get extorted. They say, you pay us or we're going to beat the shit out of you consistently every week you can plan on getting the crap beaten out of you or every commissary day you can pay us 50 percent of what you get or 100 percent. you need to pay us this flat rate every week whatever he's not one of them snaps was not one of them all the while he's going around asking people for money yelling at his grandma on the phone just snap 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 and there were very few things that I did in prison that I regret. Honestly, there was a lot of uh, stuff that I hated going through, but I mentioned the time that I slapped my friend Diesel thinking I was getting him out of trouble. And I wish that, you know, if I could go back and do it again, I would have stood up with him instead of hitting him to make his life easier. If you want to figure out what I'm talking about, go back and watch the other ones. My biggest prison regrets or whatever. Um, but I picked on, I picked on snaps with my buddy Thrasher, actually. And we didn't do anything crazy. We would do stuff like, uh, he was a really, really deep sleeper, uh, Snaps was like, and I don't know if it's cause he didn't sleep for a while and then he slept, whatever, but he was an insanely deep sleeper. So we, we would screw with him a lot of times while he was asleep. We would like, 
Uh, I say a lot of times we did it like twice. Uh, one time we, we like tore up all these little styrofoam cups. And so it was like, you know, we had a ton of this scrap, this styrofoam scrap, and we just like gently sprinkled it on him. So when he like woke up, when they called lunch or whatever, when he was, you know, waking up for the day for lunch, uh, he like had just like a shower of styrofoam all on him. And it just like went everywhere. And he, it, the funny part was how confused he was, not the mess. We even helped him clean up the mess, but it was just funny to see him like not understand what was happening. Uh, and then another time, like I said, deep sleeper, we, we gently lifted him off of his like he was laying on his blanket, right? Like his arms like this or whatever, like a vampire. And so we picked up Thrasher grabbed, you know, the blanket at the head. I grabbed it at his feet. And we just gently moved him to the bed beside him, uh, his neighbor's bed who said it was okay. We asked permission. And, uh, then we took snaps, snaps, snaps mattress, and we moved it into the day room, set it on the ground. And then we went and we got his, you know, we picked him back up very gently, quietly walked over and laid him on his mattress. So hours later, when he woke up, hours later, he woke up in the middle of the day room and it was to a security guard, a, a cop, you know, like tapping him gently being like, sir, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you sleeping in the day room? And the reason I felt comfortable doing this is one of those things that looking back is like so unjustifiable. There's plenty of stuff that I did while I was down and that everybody does while they're down where it makes sense when you're in prison and then you get out and you're like, why did I care? Or why would I put myself, why would I, why would I risk my, my freedom or my safety to do that? Whatever. Tattooing, I'm sure being one of those things for plenty of people, like, why did I do that? You know, I, maybe I wanted food or whatever, but what a huge risk do six extra years because you, you can get charged when you're tattooing people, you can get charged with like spreading disease. I don't know. It's like biological warfare, giving people hepatitis, but the way that I justified pranking snaps and I wasn't mean to him, like verbally, I wasn't like you piece of shit, be nice to your grandma. Although, you know what? I take that back. When he did wake up with all that styrofoam on him, we yelled at him, be nice to your grandma. <laughs> so he knew why we were doing it, but that's why I did it. That's why we, how we justified it. Thrasher and I, picked on him like as a moral lesson or something as though like he was going to look at the styrofoam and be like, Oh yes, I should be nice. What? I think we were just bored and it felt like, it felt like um, a way to have fun. That wasn't outright wrong. You know what I mean? Even though now I feel like it is, it felt like uh, we were like heroes <laughs> or something. Uh, and we were like fixing somebody and like protecting, protecting his grandma from him somehow. Doesn't make any sense, but that's what we did. But snaps, he's a weird guy. Really, really weird. He was probably, I don't know, five foot four, something like that. Relatively short for a man and kept his hair really like almost bald and had like a giant watermelon head which none of this is like wrong. Like if you're born short or what, everybody's born short, we're born as babies. But if you're born and then you grow up to be a short person, like whatever, who cares? That's, I happen to be tall. Some people happen to be short. Plenty of people are average, like whatever. Uh, and if you keep your hair short, who cares? And all that. But it all, like every choice that he made in prison, like tacked on top of this, I'm the snapping weird, like skittering cockroach guy. It was like he made that his pet project. Like I built the bookshelf. Some people will like take up knitting for real. They'll like pull, pull threads out of mattresses and like make stuff for people. Some people make beautiful, legitimately beautiful jewelry, rings, necklaces out of trash bags. They'll get, you know, three different tinted trash bags, black, white, and sometimes you can find like brown or gray ones and they'll twist them together and they'll use the white to make the actual ring itself. And then they'll use the black trash bag twisted together to write letters. And, you know, I don't even know, it's obviously not the whole trash bag into a ring, but you know, little pieces of this plastic. And so I was able to get one made that said Max. And I got one made that said Bailey, the girl I was, oops, I said I would never say her name. Uh, 
Bailey, the girl that I was dating when, when I was in prison. So mine said my name and hers said her name. And I, you know, I like, I got that done, I think, because it was our anniversary when I was in there. Stuff did amazing, you know, people did amazing things while I was, while, not while I was there. People did, people do amazing things in prison with what they have on their hands. And for some reason he treated it as like a, like a, a talent contest where his talent was being gross and mean to nice people and constantly in debt. It was odd. That snaps. I like these. I like. I like these people in prison videos. I haven't done one in a minute, but I know some of y'all like to hear about what be going on in prison. Man, there's some. There's some nutty stuff. I still haven't talked about, but that was. Uh, he was a character for sure. Hope he's doing well. Uh, he should be out by now. He didn't have much longer while I was there, so. Everyone, take care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.